Hello, class. Uh, this would be a recorded lecture for section 3.6 in our book, and this is the laws of cosines. Very similar to the laws of sines, uh, except there's different criteria. And so we have uh, two criteria that the laws of sines will be used to calculate the missing three pieces to our triangle. So you're always given three pieces to the triangle and you need to calculate the fourth and the fifth and the sixth. And so when you're given all three sides, the laws of cosines will give you the ability to calculate all three angles. And when you're given two sides and an angle where this angle is adjacent, so it's in between the two sides, you also use the laws of cosines. So we'll walk through a couple of examples. But first, let me show you. And uh, I like, I, I took this out of a different book that I teach out of than the one we have here, because I, I think this slide is really important because it does the algebra for you, right? So if you want one of the sides, either A or B or C, you use it in the standard form. If you want one of the angles, angle A, angle B, angle C, you'll use the alternate form. So this would be handy to have uh, when you're doing your homework, you might wanna put it again on our master formula sheet. Uh, the laws of sines and cosines formula sheet is uploaded to Freightspace. So you could take a look at this. And so one of the other things that you want to think about is that when you're given all four, all three sides, there's only three sides to a triangle. For example, we're gonna do this example. It is known that we, uh, the side that is the longest, the opposite is gonna be the biggest angle. And we talked about that actually a little bit in the laws of science lectures. And so angle B is going to be the biggest. And so that's always the one that you want to calculate first in this particular uh, situation. Because what might happen is twofold. If uh, the angle is going to be acute between 0 and 90, you would see that cosine of theta is positive in the first quadrant, right? But if you end up with cosine of theta equals a negative number, then you know it's going to be in the second quadrant, which, you know, in the old geometry, we call those obtuse angles. And so that's going to be between 90 and 180. And so you have to be careful on what the sign is. And remember that when you use your calculator, you're going to get it in quadrant four. So you got to be a little bit uh, aware of that. So, but let's walk through this example here. And so here we have, and let me just do it up here on the whiteboard. So when you uh, walk through this one, we have, uh, we call this A and that's eight feet, right? So this would be angle A and then uh, C is 14 feet. So this would be angle C over here and then B is 19 feet. So the opposite of that would be angle B. So that's the one that you want to calculate first. And when you do that calculation, uh, again, you would go back to our list of formulas. My whiteboard, I'd have that if we were in person, but my whiteboard here isn't big enough. But it would look like this. Cosine of B equals A squared plus C squared and then minus B squared all over 2AC. And again, you don't have to memorize these, which is a good thing. But there is an easy way to memorize it, but that's OK. So let's plug these numbers in. So you would get 8 squared plus 14 squared minus 19 squared, all divided by 2 times 8 times 14. So uh, when you do this calculation, you'll realize that uh, 19 squared is actually bigger than 8 squared plus 14 squared. So this turns into a negative number. So this would be about uh, 0.45089, about, right? Uh, and so we know we're in quadrant two. So now you see that you have cosine of B equals minus 
0.45089. And the good news is when you take uh, cosine inverse, right? The good news is cosine inverse is defined in the first and second quadrant. So if you use your calculator, you're always going to get the right answer. So you don't even have to worry about reference angles in this one, which is kind of nice. So I find laws of cosines to be the more straightforward of the two. And if you got your calculator at, you would have 116.8 uh, degrees. So this would be 116.8 degrees. <clears throat> and then you say, OK, I got the biggest angle. And we know that the other two are going to be uh, between 0 and 90, right? And so we need to find another one. And so uh, how would you do uh, that calculation? Well, there are a couple ways of doing it. Uh, one way to do it is to now use law signs, right? where it's just a little bit easier. And so I'll show you that because there's a lot more numbers to plug in. So say like we wanted to calculate angle A next, right? And so if you wanted to calculate angle A next, let me write the two equations up there for you. So now since we have uh, angle B there, we can think about using laws of sines, right? And so you remember we could do sine of A over A equals sine of B over little b. And so we have three of these, right? Little a, big B, and little b. So if you solve for that, it would look like this, right? Sine of A, <coughs> excuse me, equals A sine of b all divided by b. And so you can see that that one is only three things to plug in, right? Well, if you're going to use the cosine, it would look like this. And this also works, but you could see you just have more numbers to plug in, right? And so it'd be uh, 2bc. So it's up to you. You could plug all the A's, B's, C's, do cosine inverse. You're going to get the exact same answer. But uh, I always like to try to show you maybe a, a little bit uh, quicker and easier way to do that. So when you plug all these in with regards to that, you would get 8 and then sine of 116.8. And then you divide by 19 in this case, yep, 19. And so you would see that this would be uh, 0.37583. And that would be sine of A. And then you would just take the inverse of that. And you know it has to be in quadrant um, one. So that's cool. And so if you got out your calculator, you would see that this is 41, say, 0.12 degrees. And so once you have two angles, Go back to the old um, geometry way. So angle C is going to be 180 minus, whoops, mayday. Just wrote the wrong number down. Rewind. So if you took your calculator out, this is actually 20.08. <laughs> Sorry about that. I read it wrong off my sheet. And so, uh, so this would be minus A minus B, all right? And so that would be 180, and then minus the 20.08, and then minus the 116.8. And you see, if you did that, there's our 41. You see how I just read it wrong off my sheet? 41.12. So you can see when you're given three uh, sides, you always use law of cosine. Strategy, in my opinion, find the large angle, right? So use the, the opposite of the biggest side. Find that angle using cosine. Cosine is really nice because if it's negative, the calculator will give you the answer. You don't even have to think about reference angles. And so, and then after that, you could use law of sines to get the second angle and just use the 180 degree rule for triangles to get the third angle. That's really the process uh, when you walk through uh, that calculation.
Okay, so I paused the recording so I could put up the second example we're going to do in this uh, recorded lecture, and that is the laws of cosines using two sides plus the adjacent angle. And you can see hopefully what I mean by the adjacent angle. It's in between the two given sides. And so uh, when you do this calculation, <clears throat> the first thing with the laws of sines is you can calculate the uh, other side. I'm sorry, laws of cosines, you can calculate the other side. And if you looked at those list of equations, this is the one that we'd be using. b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of a. So a lot of numbers to plug in, but not too hard, right? And so this would be 9 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times uh, 9 times 12 times cosine of 25 degrees. And so if you got out your calculator and did that, you would get 29.32375. And remember that is a squared. And so uh, remember, uh, length is always positive. So you don't have to worry about the plus and minus when you take the square root, right? But if you took the square root of that number, you would end up with 5.4. And it looks like these are in meters. So we might as well put some units in there, 5.4 meters. So again, <clears throat> slide five, or check out the book as well, but these equations will come in handy. And so I use the standard form in this case, and number one, and first one in the standard form. Again, the strategy is you always calculate the other side first. So now we have all three sides, right? And so now we have three sides and one angle. So uh, again, you could use laws of cosines to get the other angle, but it usually is easier to use laws of sines, right? Because you only have three numbers to plug in instead of all these. And so uh, the next thing that we'll do is, let's see here, which one did I do in my... Okay, so again, the strategy would be laws of sines to find the, uh, another angle. And because you notice here that A is less than B, right? So if we didn't have all three sides, right? We would have that ambiguous idea or that angle. So the strategy is find the next smallest one. So we're gonna find B and we'll just use the triangle to get the last one. Once you have all three sides, the triangle's defined. And so you'll find that this one is the easier of the two. And remember that sine of A over little a equals sine of B over little b. And so when you do that, uh, sine of B would equal B sine of A all divided by A. And so when you plug these numbers in, what's B? That would be 9 sine of 25, all divided by 5.4, which we just calculated. And you would see that would be 0.704. So A would be sine inverse of 0.704. And if you did that calculation, it looks like you got 44.7 degrees. So it looks like angle C is obtuse. So when you did that calculation, uh, you would see that it would be a little bit trickier to do with laws of science. But, so that's the strategy, hopefully. So we have A minus B to get C, right? And you'll see that's 180 minus 25 minus 44.7. And if I did my uh, arithmetic right, you know what? I don't see that on my sheet. I can't believe it. Here, let me do it real quick. 180, 25 minus 44.7 minus 
So you could see that angle C up here is obtuse. It's 110.3 degrees. So again, strategy, find the opposite side using laws of cosines and find the smallest angle left using laws of sines and then find the last angle using the 180 degrees triangle rule. So that ends the this recorded lecture on laws of cosine. And we're going to do one more where we're going to do an application and introduce one more theorem on how to calculate